Hello everyone, welcome to the ninth video of this lecture series and today we will learn about thermodynamic processes. Although we have been using these concepts in the previous problems, but it is time that we learn this properly. So we will learn about thermodynamic processes and we will also learn about different use of the first law of thermodynamics We will learn about ISO body process ISO coding process isothermal process and adiabatic process we have learned about these terms for example in the previous video or in the previous to previous video we did a problem with isobatic and isobatic process and we have been using isothermal process for calculation of entropy change and adiabatic process also we have discussed but this is a systematic discussion on these topics and you will find that many a times problems will come in the competitive exams where they will ask you about what is the entropy change, what is the work done, what is the change in internal energy or heat transfer. So those things we have to learn and it will be a good practice to do them separately case by case. So we will learn about work done change in internal energy that is you. transfer Q those things and these all will be connected to the use of first law of thermodynamics for this kind of processes so let us begin with an isobody process let me name it by one So what is an isobaric process? It is a thermodynamic process where the concentrated on the term bar, which is a unit of pressure. So here the pressure will not change. So it is a thermodynamic process where the pressure of the system remains constant. 
so pressure remain constant. constant or delta P is 0. So, now let us see how this process will look in a PV diagram. Let me draw the axis. So, this is P and this is P. And let us assume that during this process, the system evolves from P1, V1, which is the initial state, to P2, P2, which is the final state. And here, as this is an isobaric process, P1 is equal to P2 equal to P. So, let us call this final, sorry, initial state A and final state B. So, from A to B, This will be the plot of this process in a PV diagram. So, the pressure is remaining constant as you can see. This is a right line parallel to the x axis, which is representing volume in our case, and the volume is changing as the system is going from state A to state B. And so, now that this is clear, we will have to look what is the work done in this process. So, we have here that let me change the color. Work done is given by let us say delta omega, which is an integration over PDV from state A to B. Now we know that P is constant, then this will only be an integration over V from A to B and so this will be P times V V minus V A where we know that V B is nothing but V 2 and V A is nothing but V 1. So, this will be work done will be P times V2 minus V1. Now, if we consider the system to be of an ideal gas, then we know from PV equal to NRT, ideal gas. So, for PV equal to NRT, we know that P V2 will be given as A N R T2 and P V1 will be given as A N R T1. So, what is this T2 and T1? These are the temperature of the system at final state and T1 is the temperature of the system at initial state. So, according to this uh, formulation, we will have that, sorry, delta W, the work done is nothing but NR T2 minus T1 or we can write it as A N R delta T where this delta T is the change in temperature of our system.
now we need to look at what will be the heat exchange so heat exchange let us assume it to be delta q is given by du plus delta now what will be the du in our case this will be nothing but cv delta t times n n is the number of moles in this case so we have learned these things in the first two lectures and we have delta omega as n r delta t so we can write this here as n c v delta t plus n r delta t and this will be we can take in common delta t common c v plus r and finally we can write that delta q is equal to n cpdt now this result is kind of expected because we are uh, proving the system at constant pressure and at constant pressure the change in heat which is the heat exchange is given by the molar specific heat at constant pressure times the change in temperature and since there are n number of moles of gas then that's why this formula stands and we have used this formula in previous problem used in some of problems okay so now we have learned about isobaric process and what is the change in heat change in internal energy and uh, change in temperature and work done for this process let us go to the next process which is the isochoric one so Number two is an isophoric process. So, what is an isophoric process? This is a thermodynamic process. where the volume of the system remains constant. So here we have the volume to be constant. So we have be constant or dv equal to 0. So, how will this process look in a PV diagram? Let us do that again. P and P and let us assume that the initial state was P1 V and the final state was P2 V. Here I have not written both the V's differently because V is constant. This is let us denote by state A and this as state B. So in the PV diagram this will be a vertical line 
of A to B. This will be the direction and P2 is greater than P1. So, this is how a isochronic process will look. So, now let us calculate the work done. In an isochronic process. So, this will be again nothing but given by the formula delta omega is equal to integration over PDV from state A to B. And now we know here for isochronic process TB is 0, then the work done will also be 0. So, this is one interesting result. Or we find that work done in an isochronic process is zero. So then, what will be the change in internal energy? Let us denote it by mu and this will be nothing by the number of moles times Cv times dt. Now, why this Cv is arriving here? This is because the process is at constant volume and what is delta t here? It is the temperature change. So, we have du equal to n cv delta t. And I forgot to tell n is the number of moles. So, now you will calculate the change in heat or heat exchanged. So, That will be from the first law of thermodynamics. We know that dQ is equal to du plus the work done we have defined, and we have found here that is zero. So here our heat exchange will also be MCV times. Delta. So that is an isochronic process. So far, we have learned about an isochronic and isobaric process, and now we will look at isothermal process. Okay, so. Now we will learn about number three, which is an isothermal process. We have learned about isothermal expansion during free expansion, but uh, this will be the repetition of some of the properties that we saw there. So I will try to keep it a bit concise. So, let us start by defining what is an isothermal process.
this is a thermodynamic process where the temperature of the system remains constant. So let us now start by checking the change in internal energy. So we will denote the change in internal energy by du and for this case this will be 0 as we have discussed earlier because here the temperature is constant that means our change in temperature dp is 0 and for ideal gas we know that the internal energy is only a function of the temperature that's why the change in internal energy will also be zero in this case So that is why du will be 0. Now let us look at what done. So let us denote it by delta w which will be an integration from a to b p dp. For this case let us assume that the initial state was P1 P1 and T and the final state will be P2 P2 So here let us denote this as state A and this as state B and as you can see the temperature has not changed. Now so what will be the PV diagram? We know for an ideal gas PV is nRT. Now since T is constant, we have that PV is also constant and PV equal to constant will be plotted like this in a PV diagram. So now let us continue with our calculation of work done. So delta W is from state A to state B, P, DV. And from the ideal gas equation, we can write that P is nothing but nRT over P. So, this integration will reduce 
a to b nrt dv over v and after the integration we will simply obtain delta w is nrt ln v2 over v1 so let me the box around this answer this is the work done now we look into the heat exchanged you know from the first law of thermodynamics that delta q is nothing but du plus delta w and since du is zero in our case we will obtain that delta q is also in rt ln v2 over v1 so this is an isothermal process so isothermal is done and next we will do the adiabatic process Number four is a diabetic process. So, what is an adiabatic process? This is when there is no heat exchanged between the system and the surroundings. no heat exchanged is adiabatic so no heat exchanged means that delta q or dq whatever we say is zero in this case This implies that heat exchange is zero, and we also know that an adiabatic process is defined as P v to the power gamma is constant. So this is the equation which defines an adiabatic process. And what is the gamma here? The gamma is the adiabatic index. which is given by Cp over 
saving this thing we discussed in video one so you can refer to that for more detail lecture one okay We also know that for an ideal gas, we have PV equal to NRT. And from this, we can write this expression in terms of P and T and in terms of P and T. So let us do that. First, we have that V is nrt over p and substituting this expression in the top one we will obtain p nrt over p whole to the power gamma is constant and since n and r is also constant we can write p 1 minus gamma t to the power gamma is a constant so this is an adiabatic process expressed in terms of p and t and we can also write that p is in our t over v which will give us in our t over v v to the power gamma is a constant and similarly this will be t v to the power gamma minus 1 is a constant which gives the adiabatic process in terms of T and V. So this is expressed in terms of T and V and this is expressed in terms of P and T and that first one that we wrote is expressed in terms of P and V. Now let us again proceed like we were doing with the other processes and we will first look at the work done during an adiabatic process. So again in this case also the work done will be given by delta W where the integration will go from A to B, P, dV and let us define for this case also the initial and final states. The initial state will be P1, V1, T1 and the final state will be P2, V2, T2. And let us denote this as state A and denote this as state B. Here we know that P P to the power gamma is a constant and let us denote the constant by K. So we can write that P is K times V to the power minus gamma. And we also have that for the initial state which is denoted by state A, we will have P1 V1 to the power gamma is equal to K and this will also be equal to 
this product in the final state which will be given as p2 v2 to the power gamma so let me put a box around this equation and this will be used later now here the work done is given as integration from a to b p can be written from here k times p to the power minus gamma tv and this integration will give k p to the power minus gamma plus 1 by minus gamma plus 1 evaluated from state a to state b so this will be k over 1 minus gamma v2 to the power 1 minus gamma minus v1 to the power 1 minus gamma now here we can use this expression let me take it with a red color use this expression in this formula so let us do that now we have delta w equal to k 1 minus gamma v2 1 minus gamma minus v1 1 minus gamma and we can take the constant k inside and for the first term we can write it as p2 v2 to the power gamma and for the second term we can write it as p1 v1 to the power gamma so let us do that this will be p2 v2 to the power gamma v2 to the power 1 minus gamma minus p1 v1 to the power gamma v1 to the power 1 minus gamma and here this term will cancel out and we will finally obtain that the work done is p2 v2 minus p1 v1 by 1 minus gamma so let me put a box around this final form so this is the work done in an a diabetic process now we can further simplify it and write it in terms of temperature we can use the fact that PV is NRT for an ideal gas so delta W can be written as NRT2 minus NRT1 over 1 minus gamma so this will be nr over 1 minus gamma times t2 minus t1 which can be written as delta t so let me write it clearly delta w is nr delta t over 1 minus gamma and let me put a box around this equation also. So both these will give the work done for an adiabatic process. Now we have looked at the work done and now we know that heat exchange is zero. So, heat 
exchange delta q is 0 because that is the definition of an adiabatic process. So, to calculate the change in internal energy, we will again use the first law of thermodynamics which states T q equal to d u plus d w here we have t q 0 which will imply d u is minus of d w. So, the change in internal energy will be given by d u equal to minus in our delta t by 1 over gamma. This will be exactly the negative of the work done. Now, so this was the adiabatic process of these four processes that we discussed today. The first two are very trivial. The isothermal is also trivial because uh, we have done it already and the adiabatic one we have discussed but we did not calculate the work done. Next uh, when we discuss the Carnot cycle, they are the adiabatic process and the isothermal process will be important because we have to calculate the work done for those cases. We will not do this uh, detailed calculation there, we will just take the formulas that we have derived here. For example, this is the work done for an adiabatic process. We will take the formula and just plug it into the final expression when you are using for Carnot cycle. This will be needed and we will use the formulas directly there. So, we will need their adiabatic and the isothermal process. So, this will be done maybe in the next to next video because in the next video I want to discuss some problems first. Okay, so this is done. Oh, I forgot to draw the PV diagram for a diabetic process. So, let me quickly do that. So, the y axis is P, the x axis is V, and the diagram can be drawn by this equation PV to the power gamma is K, where K is a constant. So, this will again be a curve like this and the slope at different point that will be dependent on the value of gamma. So, this curve is dependent on the value of gamma. Okay. So, let us stop here for today and in the next video, we will do some problems. Uh, from these concepts of calculating work done, heat exchange and the internal energy change of these thermodynamic processes. We will do that in the next video and in the next to next video, we will start discussing Carnot cycle and its efficiencies. Okay, so bye for today.